five years ago we moved to our eight tenths of an acre homestead and in this area which used to be a paddock I created a half acre food forest and vegetable garden. I've created this garden on a really tight budget. I've grown a lot from seeds and I've taken a lot of cuttings and divided plants so that I can uh, fill out the borders and have more perennial plants. It's not the quickest way to fill a garden, but for us it was the most cost efficient. And although we're not 100% self-sufficient in our food, we're getting fairly close. I used raised beds in this area because well, the ground was just so poor when we moved here I needed to raise the level and create soil to be able to grow in. I've got 20 raised beds here of various different depths. These first of all uh, have perennials in them, so asparagus, perennial kale, strawberries and raspberries. Further down there I've got some babington leeks which are a perennial leek and also perennial onions. When we moved here five years ago, I really wasn't very well uh, and I got round to using walking sticks. So developing this garden was really slow going because if I needed to push a wheelbarrow, I could push it and then use my walking sticks to step forward push the wheelbarrow again. It really was uh, exceptionally slow going. And then as my health improved, the amount that I could do in the garden has increased. And for the last three years, I haven't needed those walking sticks. And I'm very happy just to be able to potter around the garden. And in the rest of these beds, I grow quite intensively and I grow annuals and I try to get uh, three to four crops per bed uh, per year. So stuff goes in and then comes out or I've interplanted it. Uh, so lots of successional planting, lots of interplanting uh, and lots of polycultures right the way through. This bed is a really good example of how hard I work the ground here. It started the year uh, with purple sprouting broccoli in it uh, which we can overwinter in a temperate climate and once I'd finished harvesting that uh, they came out and potatoes went in. So I put the first earlies in here uh, in April, they sat in here for 12 weeks, out they came uh, and I've now got uh, carrots and beans interplanted here, a couple of squashes at that end and there's a currant bush there and then I've got carrots and lettuce and at the front there there are spring onions which I think are called scallions elsewhere and also some radishes and before we go into winter uh, a lot of these will be cleared the carrots will sit in here for the winter and I'll harvest them as I need to but I'll also put in uh, some other brassicas into here and I will cover this with netting. I don't need to net the brassicas uh, in the autumn to protect against butterflies but I do need to protect against ducks. I think you can hear them <laughs> in the background at the moment. They are excluded from this garden so they're in their enclosure over there which runs uh, the full length of the garden. They're allowed into the food forest at this time of year because I've finished uh, harvesting the currants and blueberries uh, and if I, if I didn't shut them out when I was doing that they'd have them all. So they are uh, in the food forest keeping the slugs and the snails and the other little things that uh, might attack this food uh, keeping them to a minimum and then uh, in late autumn and early winter I actually allowing them into the vegetable garden and they can go through all the pathways. The pathways uh, have all got wood chips on them uh, which uh, this one has been replaced fairly recently but I put it on in quite a thick layer and then over a couple of years it breaks down and uh, once it's broken down I can, I can scoop it up uh, and put it onto the beds to increase the organic matter uh, in the raised beds. I grow using a no-dig, that's no-till method and um, because I want to grow really intensively I need to make sure that I have uh, plenty of compost that I can add to those beds uh, each time there's an empty space. 
So I have uh, an awful lot of compost on the go at any one time. In the central section of the garden, I have created what is predominantly uh, a flower garden. And I really wanted to have something that was very ornamental because the rest of the site is quite utilitarian. But I also grow uh, some edibles in here, but they're not for us. Uh, I grow uh, quite a lot of brassicas out in the open, so not covered, not treated with anything, and I grow them uh, just so that uh, the caterpillar population can feed on those, they can reproduce, uh, make lots more butterflies. And even though they're mostly cabbage butterflies, I'm really happy to support the butterfly population. Butterflies are food uh, for bats and birds and uh, our local hedgehog population and I want to be able to support those as much as possible. And if that means having lots of cabbage white butterflies, well, I'm okay with that. This area of the food forest uh, is full of uh, herbaceous perennials. So there are lots of uh, raspberries and strawberries, this fantastic uh, plant here is a Lysisteria formosa and it's got lots of other names but it's superb for feeding the birds uh, but the berries are also edible. And I've also planted fruit trees uh, and shrubs and flowers right through this area. I'm really pleased with how mature and fruitful it is already. Uh, so there are uh, lots of apples, there's some pears, a handful of cherry trees, quince, plums, I'm sure there's some more that I've forgotten. Uh, and then there are things like uh, mint growing in the ground. Uh, it started off in an old tractor tyre but it's made its way out of that and is now just barely growing across the floor. As are other herbs like fennel and lemon balm. And about 18 months ago, I started developing the last area uh, in our garden, uh, which is this lovely walkway. And then on this side is what we're calling the market garden. For the first three and a half years, uh, this area was home to our chickens and they've spent their time turning over the soil and scratching at it and they've been able to have uh, any waste material from the garden. Now here in the UK, uh, we aren't allowed to give our chickens uh, kitchen scraps or anything that's been uh, through our house. Uh, so all of those kitchen scraps go off, collected by the uh, local authorities. And here it goes off to make biofuel. So the chickens have had all the leaves, all the weeds and everything like that all put in and they've turned it over and turned it over and I've also given them wood chips uh, and the bedding out of their houses and they have slowly improved the soil here. It is actually quite a big area uh, for the chicken number of chickens that we had in here so they didn't have a small intensive space I just I gave them the whole field uh, area to run around in and uh, they then got moved uh, to another area on our homestead and I slowly turned this uh, into the market garden. And once again, I'm growing uh, this as a polyculture. So on this side, I've got sweet corn and squashes and carrots. Uh, over here, I've got beans and chard. And at the far end, uh, there are mixed brassicas and courgettes, which I think are called zucchinis elsewhere. And even though this is a relatively large space, I still want it to work uh, as hard as possible for me. So this year uh, is the first time I've grown in this space and I planted uh, overwintering onions. So the onions went in and not long before they started reaching maturity, I planted in the sweet corn. So as I took the onions out, the sweet corn and the squashes were already in place and just ready to romp away. And at the far end, I've been growing potatoes uh, in a no dig, no till uh, style by placing the tubers uh, directly onto the ground and then covering them with a mixture of grass clippings uh, and used chicken bedding that had uh, been sitting around for a little while to, to mellow. Uh, and as the potatoes grew, I then topped them up with uh, more of that mixture of grass clippings and chicken bedding. 
and I've just harvested those. I'm really pleased with the harvest of those potatoes. I've been really pleased with how relatively simple it's been uh, to just take my time and develop this garden bit by bit. And as I've improved the soil and put in hedgerows, lots of trees and shrubs, the diversity of the wildlife here has grown exponentially and the harvest that we're getting from the garden are becoming more and more abundant. I haven't created this garden all on my own. My partner, Mr Jay, uh, has helped with all the heavy jobs and all the jobs that need two people to do them. And I've also had some help from friends who've moved wood chips and helped me create raised beds and have planted trees, including uh, the hedge that goes all around the property.